Hey everybody, it's me, Uncle Greg, aka the Free American Spirit, and today we're going to talk about our solar system. Uh, before we get going, please hit that subscribe and like button. If you want to see more videos like this, use that notification bell. And don't forget to share it. And, uh, you know, we really like it when you use those links that we provide because it helps us supply videos like this. So let's get into some questions that I've been asked about the system. Also, we're going to talk about some upgrades like the batteries and the fuses and the surge protectors and that kind of stuff and other little odds and ends, fire hazards and whatnot. So let's get into it. First thing is, this is a typical day here in Florida. You can see that I'm putting out about 238 volts that I'm bringing in. Uh, it's 239, 240 volts putting out. Right now the batteries are showing charge, but it's a 53.4 to actually go up to 54 point something to float. So it's one o'clock, everything is charged. I have no AC going, okay? These two lines coming in, one is the cable that's wired directly to the trailer, that's a 30 amp. And the other is this cord that goes, that I put into the trailer, which goes to another surge protector inside. And that runs my air cleaner and my dehumidifier and some computer stuff, about 11 amps. Um, you know, so I can unplug that at any time and put it back into the pole and I can plug this anytime and put it back into the pole. So speaking about that, let's go outside for a second. I'll show you how this is hooked up. Okay, so here they are coming out of the out of the trailer. They're hardwired in inside the trailer. So on a real bad day, I'm a little different. I use mine as like a reverse hybrid system, okay? And what that means is on a bad day when it's really cloudy for a couple days, you know, I can save my batteries and I can just plug it in here and then everything can run. This is my utility box. And this line going out is a 50 amp line going in there underneath, but it does not go to my grow watt. It just goes to a sub panel for AC for the dryer only. Dryer is only 30 amp, but whatever. I just used a dryer vent here. I just cut that little flap in the bottom here, stuck the two cords up so I can take them in and out. And then remember when I had the old dryer vent, everybody was having a cow. Oh my God, he's going to blow up the place and that humidity is going to kill everything you know well guys that was only there temporary and then i was just figuring out how to actually put that through the wall like that so that answers those questions next kind of question i got was that backer board well the backer board you know what i'm in here right now it's not hot at all it's one o'clock in the afternoon i mean it's a hot day outside but you can see i can hold this nice and easy that's not even warm for that to catch on fire, we're going to have to have a hell of a problem, you know, and it's not going to be from this solar system. Another question I got is, you know, you're just waiting to get killed. Yeah, that is open. I haven't made a plug yet for that, but I did move it up in between these. I mean, you really got to be an idiot to hit that. I have no kids or pets or dogs or anything coming here, so I'm not too worried about it. Somebody said my wiring was weird, and I'm like, why? Everything is the proper size. It all has ferrules on the end of the connection. You know, it's all the proper size. It's in conduit for each connection. You know, the AC for the dryer, like I said, goes with its own box. It's separated. The wires or the, what do you call them, extension cords coming out from the trailer. That's a 30 amp wired to the trailer. Okay, and I put all LED lights in there and it's got a better refrigerator. I swapped out using less amps. That's never gonna overheat. It never has being plugged in the utility. It's not gonna overheat here. This right here is a surge protector, but before it even sends power, it goes through all kinds of checks and checks your wattage and your volts and your whatever, your uh, frequency and all that. And if it doesn't conform, it's not gonna click on, okay? And then that one over there, I have something similar to this inside on the other end, because I didn't have something like this to do for a 20 amp. But I got this one because that 30 amp one, which I had, which is, it does the same thing, and it checks your grounds and everything and all that. I turned that in for warranty purpose, so while I was waiting for that to come in, I bought this one. So that's how that all works. I mean, I'm pretty good at, you know, everything is covered in whatever, except for when it comes to batteries. So let's talk to that about that a little bit. Um, originally, I had two batteries. And what would happen is, um, my wife is up early, and then I go to bed like one in the morning. So during that time, all the way till about seven o'clock at night before the sun goes down, the air conditioner's on constant, 
you know, two TVs are on, computers are running. I'm constantly streaming up or down to YouTube, you know, the iPads, the computer, everything. So we got a lot of stuff that uses juice. And with the two batteries all day long, this thing would always put enough juice in like it's doing now to charge those up by about 12 o'clock. So it would supply all our power and charge those up. The problem was at nighttime, I had to conserve a little bit so I couldn't run the hot water heater at night. So I'd always run that during the day, you know, but it would stay hot, take shower at night because that's a 110 and it uses a lot. But the air conditioner, I couldn't leave running from like 8 o'clock p.m to one in the morning so i would put it on like every half hour on the hour you know give or take like put it on a half hour skip 45 minutes to an hour put it on a half hour and it kept it fairly cool but when i'd come out there'd only be two lights on which means if that's set to charge at 30 percent not much battery left in the morning you know never had a problem still had juice in the morning because there is a bedroom fan that runs and other things would drain it down some more but i didn't feel comfortable so i got a third battery well, just as I would, after I installed that third battery, same thing, would have three lights, and then everything would charge up over there, you know, by one o'clock in the afternoon, fine and perfect and whatever. So I was filming and talking about that, and I was going to put that video out, and then I got a call from a carrier saying, hey, we got another package for you. I said, what package? He said, it's on a, it's on a pallet, just like your other one. So I go out there and meet him, and it's another battery on a pallet. All right, kids, so there's the battery. Handle's busted up a little bit, and it's actually open. I actually didn't open that. Well, I kind of did. I, I cut this part, but these were open, and this was open. Anywho, so that's brand new. It looks to be okay, I guess. So, I don't know. I'm going to call them up. I'll tell you what happens. I'm thinking to myself, hey, cool. They sent me a free battery. They love me. They love the videos or whatever. Thank you, Signature Solar. Woo! Well, you know, I... Then I came to my senses. I said, well, I got to call them. So what happened was I'd had some stuff I turned in on a warranty, which they took care of, and they gave me a credit. And I thought it was a store credit, so I ordered a battery. Well, I realized they didn't give me a store credit after I ordered it. The guy said, well, just wait until, you know, it goes on to your credit card, and then we'll just put it back on your credit card. I said, okay. So he sent me an invoice, and I okayed that and whatever. And a couple days later, it showed up on the credit card I called back and said hey I'm ready to get that battery it's on the credit card whatever here's the difference between what they credited back because the batteries are 1500 bucks plus shipping and I had like a 1100 1200 dollar credit so I they put it on my credit card and everything was great and that's the third battery that came in and I got so the one that came in last week I said well, what happened so I called them up they said we have no idea what you're talking about and they get searching around and they said well somehow there was two invoices, you know, the, the one you paid for and whatever. And then there was another one, and we just assumed it was the one you paid for, so we sent this out. So it was in there. I said, okay, no problem. So Signature and Solar and I worked out a deal instead of having to send it back, and they would have to eat 250 bucks to get it back, plus the 250 they sent to send it to me in error. We worked out a little bit of a deal, not much, but you know, they were gracious about it. And that was really cool, and I wound up keeping that. So now I got four batteries. Now the problem is I got to buy a bigger rack because the fourth battery is just kind of hanging up here. So while I was messing with the batteries, hooking them up, okay, I just thought I'd re-show you this again because I changed the uh, how the main and positive and negative came in. So before I had the positive at top, I had the negative at top. I didn't like that, so I put the negative on the bottom. So now it flows better through the batteries the way it's supposed to, and they all charge a little smoother. So if you look right there, one of those screws, that littler one, it goes into a bracket and then that one with two holes in it showing it goes in the bracket so what i did was i took those two screws out that one and that one i flipped that bar around right and i was able to use that big screw down there for the negative and then i had to drill a hole over there for this one well, of course i missed it i misgaged it so if you do it put the steel bracket on put the, the little screw in place mark that hole just don't you know kind of eyeball it like i did and then you won't have a hole showing but you will have that one on the bottom and so then all the batteries could screw into the small screws now on this side since i couldn't flip this around i had to drill a hole to put this battery on because it wouldn't quite fit and i'm probably going to drill that bigger and put that up but that's as far as the wire went and just to reiterate 
on the top battery, number one battery that goes to the grow watt, all those are in a down position, which are all are on. Every other battery after that gets put in a different configuration for each battery. So on this one, I got the first button off. On this one, I got the second button off. On this one, I got the third button off. If I had another battery, the fourth button would be off. And then another one, all would be up or something like that. So that kind of shows all that. These surge protectors are really great. You know, I have links to them. They protect the trailer. So if you either have a 30 amp trailer or a 50 amp trailer, you know, this one's a little different than that one, but I have links to them. Those are really good. The only other little concern I got for right now is that the shed is warm. Now, like I said, nothing here is real warm. You know, I can hold these. They're not smoking hot or anything, or, you know, and they run good. So I'll probably put an exhaust fan right above that where that window screen is that I took out, you know, and I'll probably do away with that. So this has really helped a lot because before I had the plug in outside and these were all in the elements, you know, that one was all weathered if you look at my old video. So now everything's inside, nothing's getting wet, nothing has lizards or whatever crawling up in there, which is good, you know, and it, and it works out real nice. Uh, I still have all the water sources. I still manually put my water outside there and hook the hose up to it for the washer. And I put this in the drain. Okay. So that's the only thing I do. So you don't have the washer machine line coming in, the dryer line coming in like it used to be. You know, eventually I might do that, but I like the water being outside. So when it's not running, this is empty. Of course, this is off. This is the only thing on regular AC for the utility. And everything else has its own circuit in its own place and it's running good probably the next upgrade i either put a door on that just because some people are worried you know we'll bump into it and catch a fire but you know there's nobody here to bump into this i mean it's me and my wife so i could just put a door on it but i'll probably buy a six racker and then put all six in there which will probably bring it up to about here you know and that'll be fine and I might turn it around to face this way or something, or I could just turn it around. But I like it that way because I can flip everything off and reset it if I have to. But, you know, it's pretty good. So originally, people want to know, how much does this cost me? So I haven't had a full month yet. The electric savings so far is in January, I had very few days that it was all solar because I was building it. And so I saved about a quarter of my bill. In February, I saved about... Oh, I don't know, almost half of a bill, but I had more days, but I still had some days because, you know, it was raining and I had to turn stuff back in on warranty. In March, I saved almost three quarters of my bill. I went from like 611 kilowatt hours last year down to 200, okay? And now April, we're almost done and almost every day has been on solar. So we'll see, you know, the only thing I'll have on there is that dryer. So when all those bills come out, I'll kind of go through that better on another video and show you. Um, another thing was, I've got about 12000 invested in this. So I figured it's going to take me about ooh, six and a half years to pay it off. Um, however, I'm now thinking, because I just did my taxes, I had bought some cryptocurrency um, and I sold some last year. And so I owed the government... And so I had enough credit when I turned this in for the government credit, even though it's only 26% or whatever, I was able that I didn't have to pay any taxes. Okay, so that's good. So I saved, you know, almost a thousand bucks there, whatever it was. And then next year I'll turn in some more crypto and now to use up the rest of that credit, plus another cost of two batteries. I have a little bit on that. It'll be less than 26% next year. It'll be probably down to 20 or 18. And I think then it runs out, but I'll be able to use that as I carry it forward. So. Originally, I was thinking, you know, seven years. Now I'm thinking five years because I, that credit took off, you know, a couple grand. So that brings it down from 12 grand to 10 grand. And then my electric bill, you know, as we go in the months, it's going to be saving even more because coming in May, June, July, August, September, my bill's way up there from the air conditioning. And also, you know, my electric is going up. The cost of electric is going up. So barring anything breaking and having to replace it or whatever, you know, I might pay it off in four and a half to five years, more likely around five. So look, guys, you know, if you like these kind of things, you have a 30 amp RV or a 50 amp RV and you want to buy one of those, I got links 
in the description of that. And of course, you know, you already know about all this stuff in my other videos. I can put some links in. So use those. Hit that thumbs up button, the little bell icon if you want to get notified. And if you share the video and use those links, I'd really appreciate it. So I hope you enjoyed it. I think I answered most of the questions. When I do more uh, upgrades, you know, any more switches or whatever, you know, if there's anything here that you see that you want to ask about, um, you know, feel free to do that. I did change up there all my light bulbs in here. Those are LEDs like in the in the um, trailer. I did keep boxes just in case I have to send something back. So that's it, guys. Have a great day. And I'm really happy with it so far. And I hope this helps you. Remember, I'm not an electrician. I'm not a solar guy. Do your research. Talk to your electrician, your solar guy. You know, make choices that are right for you. Later.